we go. That's the fish. Hi, I'm Dan Hernandez. I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Sport Fishing. But well, today we're back aboard the Malahini. We're fishing with Captain Bill, <laughs> owner operator of his boat. And I caught my first Dorado here in the morning. The plan today is to fish offshore outside of San Diego here in Mexican waters, looking for more Dorado, hopefully a tuna or two. Exactly. So stay exactly. tuned for this week's a very special and exciting episode fishing in the Malahini with Captain Bill and all our viewers here. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. All right. <laughs> I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Oh. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Nice Dorado out here, fishing with Captain Bill, Malahini, beautiful fish. We're hitting kelp patties, picking away at the Dorado, and looking for some tin or two. Let's take a little break from the action here on the Malahini and go to the tackle box and give you a good look at the gear you need for this type of fishing. Congrats. Thanks. This week in the tackle box, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. Fishing offshore, when you're fishing offshore like this, you never know what to expect. You might get that small tuna, that little, you know, 15 to 25 pound class, or the medium size, or really those fun ones, that 75 to 150 pound class. You never know what to expect. And the last couple of years, there's been monsters, two to 300 pounders too. And because of that, you have to bring a wide selection of gear. Don't be afraid that you have to buy all this gear. You can also rent it at the landing, but this is some basic gear that I think you should have with you anytime you go offshore fishing out of San Diego, going for tuna. And remember, even though you're tuna fishing, there could be other fish mixed in, maybe skipjack, bonita, and then lots of Dorado too. And because of that, I like to have a little bit lighter gear as my light outfit. This is a 400 series reel with 50 pound spectra on the bottom, 25 pound mono on top. Works out good for that smaller school size fish. Then you need something a little bit bigger, 65 pound spectra with 40 pound test on top of that mono. And again, if you want to use fluorocarbon on top of that, you can. And that would be like that smaller, medium kind of fish. You get to that little bit bigger fish, anywhere from like 75 pounds, 150 pounds. Something like this works out great. 80 pound spectra, 50 pound mono on top. Again, put a piece of fluorocarbon and you're all set to go. Two speed reel in case you get a nice fish. Just fight the fish, bring it in. It works out really, really good. If you get really lucky and you're out there on a day where there's 200, maybe 300 pound tuna around, you'll want to have a big rail rod. And that's what this is here. It's rigged up with 100 pound spectra on the bottom, 100 pound mono on top. And I wouldn't be afraid to use 200 pound leader if I needed to. And this works out good. Again, it's a two speed reel 
that big, big fish, this is exactly what you want. I know it sounds like a lot of gear, and it is, but when you go tuna fishing out of San Diego these days, you don't know what it's gonna be. Small tuna, big tuna, Dorado, yellowtail, you have to be prepared for everything. Now, as far as the artificials, you can use a magic metal jig right up on the surface for that medium grade tuna. It'll run it right back to you. The fish will chase it down and eat it. But at nighttime or that deep water fish, don't be afraid to use a knife jig, flat falls, something like that. Works out really good. Have them all pre-rigged ahead of time. You don't want to be rigging them while you're on the boat. Well, this is the basic gear you need for this type of fishing. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action here on Sport Fishing. Come on, go further. You gotta go further. You do not wanna go out those two Yeah. Right over here. Wind it. Thank you, sir. Under, under, under. Under. Yeah. Color, color. I'm going to. It's wide open, guys. It is wide open fishing. Doesn't get much better than this. Awesome, awesome fishing. We got fish all around us. <laughs> if you never experienced wide open fishing, this is what wide open fishing is like. Everybody's stapling their fish numbers on. Fish on the deck, fish in the boxes. People have never ever caught boil a fish or catching corner. fish. Boil, boil. We got Terry in the corner. She's never been offshore before. There's another oh, fish. The it's just water. crazy, crazy fishing. So All right, let's take a little break from the action and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious fish for catching. This week in the galley, we're down in Long Beach, California, aboard my boat. Standing next to me is Chef Rock. Hey, hey Chef. Hey, Dan. How are you, sir? Long time no see. Always a pleasure. And yes, it's a great time <laughs> to be hanging with you because I'm hungry. Good. I'm hungry. Chef has his own TV show in Hawaii, and I've known him for many years with different TV shows he's done here in the States. Today, you're going to cook for us, and what do you have in store? One of my favorite dishes to do in uh, Hawaii is ahi, of course. Okay. Uh, we, you have some beautiful tuna that yeah, you Yeah, this is local tuna we just caught. We're gonna dredge it, we're gonna sear it, and then I'm gonna make a little glaze just to go over the top. Something okay. simple, easy, you can serve it over glass noodles, anything you want. So How I have some started? wasabi. Okay. Just powdered wasabi, I'm gonna go with a little fuchikake. You can go with any flavor you want. This one has a little bit of the uh, two different types of seaweed, sesame seeds, a little bit of ginger, and some garlic. Kind of give that a quick mix, you know, just blend it all together. So you incorporate all those great ingredients together. Mm -hmm. Spread it out because I'm gonna dredge our tuna in there. Okay, cool. Before you dredge and do all that, you wanna make sure your oil's nice and hot. I got a, it's canola oil in there. I got it probably at the medium high heat. It's almost at that smoke stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see when I put, throw a little in there, you can see a little bit of the Pops. So I got some beautiful tuna here. And uh, whoever caught this did a That's nice my. job for filleting. So I'm just gonna dredge this really quick. And this is what you wanna do right before you put it in the oil. Okay. Because you don't want it to soak up and get like a batter on it. And just make sure it's completely coated. And we're just gonna sear, we're not gonna deep fry it or anything. No, no, not at all. So I got a little bit of oil in there. Okay. 
and uh, that puts that nice little uh, sushi flavored. And that wasabi will not overpower either. So I'm gonna put that right in to that pan. Get my hands a little wipe real quick. And then I wanna turn these because they quickly cook. And you'll see that. Do the ends. It puts a nice crust on the outside of that ahi. Mmm. Doesn't it smell good already? Yep. Do that side and then the bottom side. And I have a little cutting board here, which I'll cut it up with. I just want to make sure it's browned all the way around. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Now for the people who don't like it sushi style, mm -hmm. you can actually just cook it all the way through. So well, why gonna, would you do that? I, I was just going to say, it's like <laughs> eating steak well done. No offense to people that like it well done, but yeah. might as well take off my shoe and take a little bite of that, mm -hmm. you know? A little, not my quipote, mate. So I have this hot oil. I'm going to let it cool a little bit. Then I'm going to show you how to get rid of it when you're on a boat or in mm -hmm. your house. Okay. But while we're waiting, we're going to make a little sauce. That's right, a little glaze. I get a little barbecue if you want to hold that bowl. Okay. Since we're kind of limited on a little space, space here. Sweet Chinese chili sauce, but equal amounts. I'm going with a little bit of sesame seed oil. A little bit of soy. This is a little glaze that I make for my pokey. Okay. A little special. A little crushed red pepper. Some green onion, just sliced. This is also a great glaze for the barbecue. I put this on fish at the end of the cooking cycle, uh -huh. and it just caramelizes up because all those little sugars that are in there. It's a great, great sauce. So we have the sauce done. Okay. I have the ahi done, and I'm gonna try to get rid of these here so you can see this. And I'm gonna just slice it how they do, it, how we do it uh, in Hawaii. Sushi style. Sushi style. So. Perfect, look at that. Yeah. So you just slice it on the bias, you know, mm -hmm. a little half inch piece. And then you shingle it, because the presentation is three quarters of the battle. When you're making a dish, you wanna make it look all perfect. So I'm gonna turn that last piece around. And then I'm gonna put this right on top and then shingle that down so you see that beautiful ahi. Then I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of glaze. This will make the perfect dish for any like brunch mm -hmm. or anytime you're having a little chateau party on the yacht, right? It'd be nice to just watch football and have that. I was just gonna say, I, I would be a good Super Bowl dish. That. Yeah, nice and easy to do. Simple and tasty as well. And you can do those blocks ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then just slice yeah, them up right them before up. you're going to serve them. Yeah, because you want to serve it cold anyways. That's right. There you go, my friend. That looks delicious. Ahi over glass noodles with a little chef rock glaze. So I wanted to show you this one last thing. How do you get rid of the oil on your bateau? You go like this. And this is called Fog Safe, uh -huh. which stands for fat oil and grease. You let the oil cool just a little bit. This is a recycled paper with... In uh, uh, an inner that is what they use to soak up oil spills. Let it sit for about a minute. Mm -hmm. Then, then you throw the whole thing away. Nice. Um, it doesn't spill out, you know, mm -hmm. and it it saves the environment. That's the uh, mm -hmm. and your pipes on your boat. Yeah, I know you don't want to drop that anywhere in the boat, and you can't drop it over the side. No, I wouldn't anyway. Right. You know, so it's nice and perfect way to end the meal. Cool. Easy to clean up. Beautiful dish. This looks great. I got to try. Anytime, it. anywhere. Oh, this is like sushi. You just pick it yeah, up. Yeah, just with the fingers. Pick it up Some and eat sauce. it, buddy. Try that sauce. Mmm. Good, huh? That was so good. The sauce just has enough pungent flavor. Just kick it. What do you think? I think <laughs> Sorry, I, crew. That, I caught a delicious tuna there. That's really good. And I cooked it up for my best friend. All right, well, thanks, Anytime, Steve. Dan. Well, thanks, Chef. Pleasure, Dan. Always. Good to see you. Yeah, it was nice to see you. And if you're in Hawaii, look for him on TV. He's right. there. And you might see him at your local station, too. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. This is good. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> Get it! No problem, guys! Get it! Get it! 
Take him back to the back there. And then wine, 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 wine. See, he's coming to us right now. Can I get a gap over here, please? Lift up on your rod. Now wine, 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 wine. Stop. Now we're gonna lift up on it. And we're gonna hold it right here. Whoa, 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 whoa. show you how easy this is. Fly line bait. I'm not even going to cast it. I'm just going to toss it out. Toss it right here in the corner. Right there. I just got bit. Instant. I'm on. Here's my fish. That was like 10 seconds. That's how wide open this bite is, guys. It's a bonita, it's still a tuna. They're everywhere around the boat. Pretty crazy. All right, let's take a break from the action. And when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week.
For this week's tip of the week, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we did today here aboard the Malahini. It was all about live bait fishing. Everything we caught today, the bonita, the tuna, the bluefin tuna, and the dorado, they all ate the live bait. And once those fish got in a frenzy bite, you could go up to the heavier line. You know, a lot of people started out with 20 pound tests, moved up to 30, and at 20 and 30, we lost a lot of tuna. But once the guys switched up to that 40 and 50, we are able to get most of that tuna that we got. And the bonita, they didn't care. I was catching them on 20, and the last two I got on 50 pound test. But it was all about getting a good lively bait, pin it on there, get it right in the back of the boat, and those fish came up. The Dorado ate really good on the live bait. The bonita ate the live bait really good. And of course, those tuna did too. Well, I want to thank the crew here aboard the Malahini, Captain Bill, all the deckhands, they did a great job. We just had lots of fun fishing with them. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.